James here from the Gator Nation Football Podcast, bringing you another film review. This time of Florida's offense versus Texas A&M's defense. A solid road win for this unit. I'll review the film with you and we'll see what went right, what went wrong, and what of course could be improved for the future. As always, if you like this content, sub to this channel, follow us on social media, drop us a dono on Patreon, where you can support our efforts to bring you this type of content all season long, and check out the podcast each and every Monday, where we bring you in-depth analysis on the Florida Gators. All right, let's start in the first quarter, like we always do each and every week, and walk through this game to see what Florida put on film. Second and 17 for Florida after a full start, of which you will see, well, I won't show you them, but you'll see several of them on this film by way of yardage. AR, of course, had a very nice game in this game. He seems to be excellent outside of the state of Florida. But as a reminder, my job here on Film Review is to show you what would be perfect. This is what I would be doing if I were coaching Florida and I were showing AR what is optimal. It's the same thing I'm sure that Napier is doing in his own view and his own opinion, of course, with what is happening. And Napier has the big advantage of knowing exactly what the play design is, what the play call is, what the primary is. As all of you know by now, I am obviously speculating a bit. You can know quite a bit from film, but you can't know everything. But on this play, I'm going to show you a really nice completion for a first down, but it wasn't optimal from a quarterbacking standpoint. Again, this is not to dog AR or any player. It's just to show you what's optimal. And keep in mind, AR takes a lot of heat from Florida fans. Um, He's only a redshirt sophomore. He played three to four games his senior year of high school. Didn't play at all his freshman year. He redshirted, played just three games as a starter last year in Mullen's system. And now, you know, he's halfway through his season this year. So in the past three years, he has, you know, less than 12 or 13 games under his belt entirely. So we can't expect him to make throws that an NFL quarterback would make or a Kyle Trask would make, a guy who played much later in his career. But we can on film obviously show what would be done if it was optimal while also recognizing, again, that AR is, in fact, a redshirt sophomore. You cannot expect him to be a fifth-year senior yet. He's just not there yet, but he did a lot of really nice things in this game. Let's start by looking at this particular play here. We'll get cover three from Texas A&M. We're going to run off the corner here with a skinny post from Ricky. We're going to run two underneath routes. I'll make the motion happen here. Jet sweep, far likes to run. Here's one underneath. Then here's going to come a little sit route here. And then this is the window that AR should be looking to hit right here relatively quickly as soon as he opens up and he confirms what's going on here on the back end he's seen a safety drop deep he has cover three dropping deep off your screen over here that you can't see and he's got cover three here obviously with ricky so he knows right away this is not an option then immediately your next option is going to be here in between the underneath coverage hole this is a very easy throw and a read that should happen quite quickly AR in this game was slow to get through his progression, slow to get through his reads. Something last year under Mullen we saw him do a lot better job of was kind of move much faster through his reads. So we've talked about this offense in general and just how he doesn't seem to be quite as comfortable. Well, right here's a good example of it. This is the window to hit this throw. You've got a linebacker opening up here. You have a huge window here. Receiver's going to get their head around right now. Nice, big, easy window. Let's hit this ball before we get to the safety. Hit this here and we can make a move on the safety, right? Instead, AR is still sticking onto the skinny post route by Ricky, which is absolutely not there. It has not been there. He's going to wait too long for this throw. Now he sees him, but now we have a linebacker that can make a play. He wisely does not just just attempt to dart this ball straight through because if he does, of course, this ball could be picked. Instead, he does make the right decision and now throw to this window, which he's going to look wide open, but on your screen comes the safety. You made about a 15-yard run to get down here. Just gets there a little late. Nice catch by Frazier's, hangs onto the football, and Florida's going to wind up moving the sticks with this play. So a really nice play there, but could have been much bigger, much bigger. You can see how far the safety is back. If we hit him here, he's going to catch this ball, go head up one-on-one versus safety, and that's how plays like this can become 40 and 50-yard plays versus 20-yard plays. So either way, we'll take the completion. Good play call, good play design. Execution was fine, optimal was in the early window right here. Florida ran a lot of 11 11 personnel in this football game. And I think that's a great thing. Florida runs a lot of 11 personnel in general. It's not like it was something that was brand new. But given the injury to Zipperer, we ran 11 personnel almost the entire game, with really the exception of the start of the fourth quarter until the end of the game, where we ran several snaps of, of 12. 
but we ran a lot of 11 and out of 11, you're gonna get, in my opinion, better better disguise, better deception when you're going to send just two routes out because you have three receivers at the start, you're spreading the field more east-west at the start here. And if you send two receivers out, the defense is not totally sure if you are going to be running a play action with max protect like they are often out of 12. And you're going to see that right here. Nice design, nice play call. We totally botch up all the fakes here, right? All these fakes are wrong. Timing's wrong on this one. Timing's wrong on this one. But whatever, we're fine. It still worked for our purposes here. All we're trying to do is clear a lane for this hitch route here to Ricky with a guy playing cover three for AM, backing off, basically giving you this route. We quickly open up. Back foot hits, identify, sling it in there, put it on him. Then Ricky turns the corner, picks up a couple of extra yards. Really easy conversion there on second down and long. Florida in this football game had a really nice performance, but they often were facing second and long, third and long. Uh, they weren't exactly staying on schedule, but they were chunking yards almost at will. And here's a nice example of Florida sending just two routes out into the pattern, something they have struggled with and getting a wide open receiver here, which in my opinion has a lot to do with the fact that they're starting off here in 11 personnel with three receivers, one running back, one tight end. They're not all bunched in this year as much. They can run a lot more, and that's going to confuse the back end of AM. Of course, AM was missing a ton of guys on defense. That certainly helped Florida's case, but either way, Florida had to execute, and early on, they're doing so. First and 10. Florida ran the same exact play earlier, but Ethan White whiffed a block. He had a, he had a rough game this game, I think, as far as Florida's offensive line goes. Not his best day, but he totally whiffed a block in here. Wound up going for a loss. On this play, they're going to go right back to it. They liked the call again. Florida operating out of a two-by-two two here, spreading the field east-west. I like these looks. I think these are much more dynamic. I think they're more comfortable for AR. I think they give Florida's playmakers a chance to do more on the edge. I do think there's room and reason to mix in, obviously, 12 personnel and bigger sets and bunch sets, but I like what I saw from Florida as far as spreading the field more east-west in this game. And here comes an outside zone run, simple run. Ethan's job here is to get head up and turn this defensive end right here. Get up, now turn him this way, right? Let's run out here. Let's rip this way. We're going to rip this way and create ourselves a lane. That's exactly what happens. Montrell's going to do the rest. We get a little bit of whiff block here from Tarquin. He kind of wants this one back right here. Let's get better hands on the guy. A little whiff, but that's all right. Montrell's got you. Put the hand on the ground there once. No, no big deal. Hand on the ground there twice. Let's pick up a first down. So Florida did not run the ball with ease early on in this football game. AM was loading the box up, but they did pass the ball enough to open up the run game. And Florida obviously wound up having, again, a great offensive day, both passing and running the football. Third and 13 now, we've talked before on previous film breakdowns about Florida's lack of a screen game in situations where I think it could benefit them and even a lack of a quick game. Florida did run about six snaps in quick game. In this particular game, a zero drop from the quarterback, getting the ball out quickly. I think that was to their advantage. Some of those plays were wasted plays, not a big fan, but this is a good play that Florida unfortunately gets the snap count timed on them right here with an A gap blitz from the linebacker. Watch this. Times this up really nice. So this is going to end this play, but this is a good play on third and 13 for a lot of reasons. Field position wise, you're here in the 34 yard line. If you can get yourself down here, you make the field goal easier, but you also give yourself a really good chance to go for it. So this is a great play call for that situation. On top of that, on third and 13, it's really hard to trust your offensive line, even as good as Florida's can be against an overmatched opponent. This is not Georgia, of course, here. At blocking, it takes a long time to block on third and 13. So this is a nice play call. Again, this is a single-handed disruption here by AM. If he does not time that snap count correctly, Florida has a really nice call on. Let's pause it right here and see. We've got a block here. We've got a block coming out here. We're going to come right in here and hit this inside screen with the safety here in the middle. This is really nice stuff. You basically got these two guys playing man over here, and this is going to be a nice play for Florida, a really nice play if we don't have this, right? We've pushed him up the field here. We've executed everything perfectly. He has ruined this play for Florida, which is really unfortunate. AR still tries to get the ball in here, which he does, but because this throw and timing gets off, high throw, not at the right timing, can't get the block here, right? We're looking back at him. Oh, man, I missed him. That's really a bummer. If that ball got off clean, though, you can see we have one man here to beat coming out here and you're probably getting at least to here with a move made you might be here 
or here. You might even get the first down, but either way, you set yourself up nicely. I like this call on third and 13. I would like to see Florida utilize more screens like this, especially if they're able to get a feel for catching football teams in looks like they caught AM in right here. This is a great look to run this play. Florida just does not execute here. Again, getting the block. You got to get this block. This block's got to happen here. Kingsley, uh, and obviously a great timing of the snap count there. But again, third and 13, good play call there. Didn't work the way Florida wanted to primarily because he timed the snap count perfectly. Again, 11 personnel from Florida here. Florida kicked a field goal after the last play we watched and m then went down and quickly scored. So it's seven to three. At this point in time, you're going to have Douglas here, the bottom of your screen. Got a lot of snaps in this football game. And if you watch on TV and you were just talking to your friends and not paying attention, before you know it, Douglas is not even in the play. I'm just going to show you this play because this is what you saw on television. There's a jet sweep. There's some play action. Here's an underneath throw. To Xander's completion. Going to pick up a good, you know, seven yards here. Nice start on first down. You're thinking that's great. It's a really nice play. What you can't see, but what actually happens is a much bigger play. And this was good. This is very good. You know, my job here on film review is to tell you what's on the all 22. And a large part, what I want to see are open receivers. Even if we don't hit them, you want to see open receivers. You want to see optionality. And Douglas, who they call payday, absolutely destroys this dropping cover three corner and is wide open here with no safety for a touchdown. Now let's watch this again. AR, of course, knows he has this route. Now, typically when Florida runs this play, they get tons of pressure right here. We've seen every team do it. a and does more or less the same thing, except as opposed to bringing this guy, which most teams have been bringing, right? They're either going to bring him right down in here and they're going to cycle this down. They choose not to. Now, I have to think AR in this case is just so used to getting immediate pressure here that he's just, I'm here, I'm good, I've got this, I'm going to take it. It's first down, I'm on the road, it's 7-3, fine, right? But he actually has time. He has time here to do what he should do, which is if he rolls out right here, and if he's looking downfield first to then come down here, one more time, roll out, downfield first, and then come down here, and again, it should be noted if you're watching this saying, well, wait a minute, James, isn't it possible this is the primary and that go routes window dressing? Yes. Yes, it is. But I want to tell you that that route was there. The coaches, of course, will see that on film. They'll see it on film for the future. And it may become a play that we see even this week. But regardless, finally, he's rolling out, no one in his face. And he would have been able to set right here, take a look down the field. And if he was looking down the field right now, this play is going to be an easy touchdown. That's easy six points. As it stands, Florida takes the underneath route and picks up seven. That's really good. Plus seven on your underneath route, a touchdown on your deep route. That's the kind of stuff you're looking for on film. So very nice play. We've seen this play on film review before, but again, Florida 11 personnel, it's just to me, is it's it's more difficult to defend. Again, a a lot of inexperienced guys out there, a lot of freshmen. This stuff's harder to defend. They come out in a bunch trip set. We're going to motion back in and settle into here and kind of Florida's base 11 package, more of what they want to do with an H-back, gives them a better advantage in the running game. We're going to run what looks to be like split zone, which I think has been Florida's best running play this season. Now you've seen this wrinkle before. We're going to fake a block here and come out. Florida has thrown this ball before, but this is so deadly because this is a zone read by AR. He's reading this edge defender. If he comes and collapses underneath, he's going to keep this ball. But here's why this is so dangerous, though, right, is now we're going to keep this. He's going to freeze here. He thinks he's going to get engaged. He doesn't. We're going to come down here and get a little block. And now, right, you have basically a two-way running play. And he's actually in no man's land on both. Like, in reality, either AR or, or in this case, right, ETN, could have taken this ball and probably had a very positive play. We've got the block locked up on here. AR can probably outrun him with Xanders coming up for a block here. We also hit the inside. So you know it's a good running play when you have both avenues open and available to you. It's a really nice design. There's a lot you can do off this. Uh, so Florida does this stuff again with the run game. You know this if you've watched these film reviews. And ETN who's quickly becoming one of the best players on the field for either team each and every week does what he does and maximizes the yardage on this play for a Florida first down. Same drive, second and six. Again, Florida spreading the field now. This is really nice. They kind of have to do this because, again, they don't have zipper. And so they're they're playing more of a more of a spread style offense. I, I think this is nice. We're pulling defenders, right? Look at this. We're pulling defenders further away on either side. This is going to create a clearer box. And then with six in the box here, Florida's got six and then eight in the box, right? So we have, that's a great eight, isn't it? That's really ugly. There you go, eight. 
Eight and six, we're plus two. So Florida should definitely run the football here. Hands down, run the football. Take the numbers. You know you've got a defender here who's a conflict defender. He's going to be looking in. Your safety's going to be looking in. Uh, but in this case, I like this play. This is a nice setup here. Go and get him a split zone. AR with the ability to keep this or hand this off on the zone read. Get some really good drive here. Look at the drive by Barber. Just blow this guy out of the hole. ETN doing what he does so shifty. Is he going to go here or here? He's got a two-way hole. Chooses the inside gap. And now because Florida is further spread, because Florida is spreading this guy out further, right? These are further splits. He isn't as close as we've seen in the past. He's not right here off the edge. You've seen that early on this season. He is now out of position to make this play. As opposed to it being a four or five yard gain, it's a 10 or 12 yard gain. So details make the difference here for Florida. Florida pre-snap showing a lot of motion again. Xanders is lined up here. And now we're gonna motion him across the formation. That's gonna be the first step. Reset him on this side, bring a safety down over on the rotation there. Now we're gonna bring Xavier Henderson out on this jet sweep behind AR, staying in the pistol formation. And if you've watched again earlier film reviews, you have seen me draw up almost this exact play. Now, they didn't do this the way that I wanted them to do it um, for my own personal purposes, but they came pretty close. So before, if you've seen this, it was several games ago, I had saw this exact thing and said, look, what Florida could do is instead run a more traditional, let's call it an air raid, cover three beater. If a team's in cover three, you're going to want to run him off with a go route. You want to take your slot and you can run him on any kind of scenario where he's going to, he can fake block, whatever the case may be, basically an out and up or a wheel route to take advantage of the fact that you're going to have a low, a middle, and a high route. And essentially, you're going to two on one this guy. He's got to make a decision. That's what you're going to want to do. You want to make it seem like you're going to block this, which is what Florida's going to choose to do here. Fake a block. We're going to run this play here, run him off. And we're gonna have a big play. Now, the only thing Florida does that I don't love that affects them on this play is they elect to run a skinny post here. In my opinion, don't run the post, run the go. Because if you run the post, what happens is this cover three dropper, which is what happens here, is gonna keep his eyes in the backfield all the way back. He's gonna pass off that post route right here to the middle safety, which is what happens. Had he run a go, he would have occupied this corner all the way back and it would have been a much bigger window for Ricky to catch this football in. As it stands, let's take a look and see how this play works out. We're gonna pump fake this screen. Very nice, pump fake the screen. He's coming downhill. He knows his responsibility is the flats. He's gotta guard the flats. He's gonna see this pump fake and then here he knows, uh oh, I've got a route over me. We've essentially two on one him, right? Two V one. That's what we love to do. We want a two V one a safety. You want a two V one a linebacker. You want a two V one people in your passing game. ARs, all he's doing is reading him, comes down, stick it here. That's what happens, bam, he's down, he's out of the play. This is separation, it's a touchdown. AR knows it, clean pocket, great job executing here. Just gotta deliver a good ball, right? I'm wide open, let's deliver a good ball. AR is gonna sail this ball, I mean, just really a touch too far, but that's not really the problem. Again, what you should see here, you should see here is Florida's wide receiver right here. And if he is here, this cover three corner is not re-engaging to make a hit. He is backed up with him and this middle safety can never get there. Right, So I think the play design on this play is what hurts this for Florida. Ricky feels the hit's coming. Pearsall knows the hit's coming. He tries to bring it down quickly here, get it and tuck it. He knows he's got a brace and unfortunately he loses it right there trying to brace. You can see him trying to make the brace motion. He knows it's coming. If he can brace, we're locked up for a big gain instead. Right, We're taking a huge hit right there, targeting. Ultimately, he'll get ejected for this play. Uh, but in reality, this is a good play by a cover three dropper. He did everything right. He dropped back, he saw the post, he passed it off, he came here and he helped on the rail, right? But I love this play. Again, it's exactly what we essentially have called. Um, it's A5, as we call it in my own playbook, run this play all the time, especially against teams that run cover three. But it was great to see Florida put this concept in there. Of course, Napier is familiar with all these concepts. Every coach is familiar with every single coverage beater, at least in theory, hopefully. Uh, but it's great to see it here on film in this game. And it could have been, again, a touchdown, I think, if Florida cleans up that detail eliminates the post, makes it a go. Either way, incomplete pass. It's a good ball by AR. You know, the best ball you can make here is a little bit behind him here so he can tuck up here. But really, this is a nice play. And again, I think that occurs because of the play design itself. It's not often that you're going to see teams totally abandon covering AR, but they did it right here in this game. Take a look at this again. AR, zone read. What's he going to do? Read the edge defender. Right, His read man could be the end, could be here, but either way, he's going to read the space. 
And what does he find but just delicious goodness? Everyone has gone over here with Montreal. He's like, oh, this is a dream. I will raise the question like I've raised every single time Florida does this in the red zone. Why is our bunch set so close? Why not push this bunch set to the boundary? These guys know they want to help. Make them go five yards further. And if they don't go five yards further and they stay lined up in here, then you can run an easy three-on-one play. So to me, again, details, I think Florida should push these guys further out. Regardless, AR is still going to finish this play. Hits the hole with his speed and strength. Nobody really wants to give a good effort to tackle him here. Can't blame him. They're making business decisions at AM, of course. It's, it's seemingly that's all they really do nowadays. Um, and then here we go. Touchdown AR. AR's feeling good too. I liked AR's mentality in this game. Last game, we had asked for AR to be more demonstrative, take on more of a, a physical leadership role with regards to his energy and emotion, um, with his body language. And I thought this was the best we've seen from him from start to finish in a football game. Really, really showing positive emotion, being engaged. Um, showing aggressiveness, showing attitude. I thought it was a really, really positive step for him as far as a leader on the field and a nice finish there to put Florida up early. When you run the jet sweep or orbit motion a million times a game, you got to hit it every now and then. You got to run it a couple times a game. Keep them honest. Make sure they know this can happen. Florida used Ricky Pearsall in this role as well as Xavier Henderson. It was nice to see Pearsall in this role. I think Florida should keep doing that. Get him the ball as much as possible. In here for zippers, Jonathan Odom. He's going to get a two-for-one block here, sort of accidentally, but there you go. It's your jet sweep. It's your handoff. Here comes a two-for-one block, sort of inadvertently, but watch it. There he goes. He's going to trips himself. He's going to knock himself out of the play, and then Ricky's going to go ahead and elect to take it right here and then look like he's coming inside, but hey, look, I like this block. I'm going to read my blocks, right? I've got two blocks that are pushing to the inside. I'm going outside. Great way to read the field there. He maximized that play, picked up probably an extra seven yards by doing so, and a first down becomes a first down. I showed you the split zone that Florida ran earlier where the H-back, or in this case the tight end, doesn't actually block here, but he looks like he does. And Florida, of course, saw the same thing on film, knew they had a good option the previous time they run it. Let's just flip it. Let's gator it, as I like to call it. Let's flip that and go the other way. And same thing, fake the block, leave this man in no man's land, right? We pull the linebacker in, AR just makes this read. He knows he's got him bottled up on the inside here. He's going to keep this. Here we go. Keep this to the outside, no chance. He doesn't know where the ball is. Now we're out here with the lead blocker. Way to check back Odom. Check Odom right here. Odom's checking back. AR kept it. Great, I'm alive. I gotta make a block now. Let's go find somebody. Bingo, come in here. Get a great block, right? This is an important block. This is really, really key. If you're a coach, I'm gonna replay this 10 times in the film room. When we get back together as a team and say, this is why this plays a touchdown and not just 10 yards, right? I don't care how athletic AR is. This is what you do. You look back. Does he have the ball? Yes, he does. I'm blocking somebody. How am I going to block him? I'm going to block him here because I know that this is the most probable path to a touchdown. Bam. Out of the play. That's all it takes. When you got a guy with AR speed, that's all it takes. Readjust him. You're not going to catch him. AR hits third gear for the first time since week one, then eases off right here knowing he's in. No need to go to fourth gear. Keep myself healthy. Touchdown. Really great stuff by Florida. Good recognition early by Billy as a play caller and play designer to see that play was there before. Let's go back to it. Touchdown, and the shootout is on. All right, AM somehow outdoing Florida, despite the fact that their offense is terrible coming into this game and they're missing half their team. But we'll worry about that on the defensive video where things, of course, as you know, got a lot better in the second half. But at this point in time, it is an absolute race to 100. And it's 17-17, here we go. All right, Florida going to line up in trips. We've seen a lot of good plays, a lot of good play design. I have nothing for you on this one other than to ask questions about why this happens and why we're going to see it more than once. This play has got to go to the garbage can. This is a trash play. First of all, good on AM. If you watched last week, you saw me talk about the importance of basically taking a bunch set and making your own V. There's several ways to do this, but this is my favorite way. Make your own V, head on head here, take away any kind of ability you have to throw this route, make it hard, make it difficult, keep your defenders close, leave these guys free, they're on different levels, three different levels so they can cover in man. Good starting technique here by AM. Florida's going to help them. There's a lot of ways they can run this play. I just do not understand what this is. So one, we're going to run a screen. Okay, that's fine. We're going to run a screen, that's great. Two, we're going to run a screen where we take our receiver and bring him backwards, Okay. I don't like that. That's step one. We're bringing him backwards down this way. So if he catches the ball, he's going to have to reroute his momentum. Don't like that. There he is, right? This ball by AR, predictably, is not great. 
We just aren't on the same page on any of these sort of east-west screens for the most part. AR tends to always lead his receivers too much, which is not what you're looking to do on these plays. But he's doing that because, again, guy in his face. Why? Because the timing of this play is just so freaking janky. Like, again, if we know we're going out here, right, we know we're going out here, we don't need to fake this. We've seen this before. There is no need to fake this. If we like this look and we're going out here, don't fake that. We, there's no linebacker that you're even fooling here that you even care about. All you're doing now is allowing this guy to get into your window. On top of that, you've made this play longer by trying to time this up with the fake. Don't like it. And then more just wackily, what are you doing with Xavier Henderson? I'm going to hope this is a mistake by him, but what is, what is going on here? We're just going to leave the inside man completely unblocked exactly where we're running the screen. I've got to assume something is wrong here. This is the guy that should be unblocked. We're trying to run an inside screen. He's got to be blocked and he's got to be blocked. So I'm going to hope and pray this is a mistake by a player. It's an execution mistake. I mean, this is just not going to work, obviously. I mean, what, what is this? This is not going to work on first down and 10. But what's worse about this is, this is a great pre-snap look for this play. a and is basically showing you they're in cover one man. This is such a simple thing to do. If they're in cover one man, here you go, ready, right? Watch this. Run them off, run them off, run this. Piece of cake. Look at his leverage out here, right? Simple as can be. No matter what zone defense they're in, this play will work. Why? If he wants to stay down low right here, he's looking, right? As soon as he passes this linebacker, he's looking back into the backfield. Bam, stick it underneath the safety. Same thing is going on here. Simple, simple play right here. Boom, hit this instead. I do not understand that design at all. It makes no sense. I would like to see Florida change that design because this is a good opportunity to attack. It's a great time to attack this set. Not the way Florida did it. Third and eight, Florida goes empty. Florida would go empty quite a bit in this game. Of course, if you guys have followed my podcast at all for any amount of years, you know I love empty sets, especially in college football, especially when we're gonna spread these teams out wide. And here's why. Look at how easy this is if you're playing quarterback, right? It's so easy to read this. Do you see anybody in the back end? No, you do not. No one's there. You're locked up in man here. He's probably going to wind up being your cover one safety, but at worst, you have cover one or cover zero. That's almost certainly what you're going to get. So, you know, you're locked up, locked up, locked up, right? It gives you clarity as a signal caller. Now your job is simply to execute. Let's see if AR does. There you go. There's your role to cover one. You know exactly what you have. Now you have to execute. Now, in the past, we've seen Florida not win these one-on-ones. Well, the good news here is we're going to win this little out route here. Going to win the in route here and win the in route here. We have three wins. AR pre-snap should be picking the best matchup that he has, which in this case is going to be this one, Xavier Henderson, or at least what he thinks the case is. Torrance here is going to try to get off this block at a little late. He did not have a great game. He at least reroutes him. AR climbs the pocket perfectly, keeps the eyes downfield, throws a dart right here to Henderson. That's a great pass. But again, more importantly, Florida won three of their one-on-one matchups there in cover one man. They all were easy throws had we blocked this up and had enough time, which is what's going to come down to the offensive line here. We're five on five. If we block this up, third and eight, we have enough time to hit these routes, which we did, and we convert. So good play call, good play design, good execution by the players, and we move the sticks. Second and nine, this is a play that, again, on film, if I'm in the film with AR this week, here's what I'm saying. Hey, look, this is nice. You're going to do a nice job here managing this play, but there's so much more available to you. Hang in the pocket when you have one. Don't be in a rush. Keep your eyes downfield, and here's why. Etienne is starting to flash the more he plays as a receiver. He's getting open quite a bit. Florida's going to see this on film. Other teams are going to see this. Florida needs to make this pay before this season is over because it's here. You have a great matchup with a linebacker coming through traffic. Again, don't make no mistake about it. This play is designed for this. This is not a decoy route. And ETN is going to absolutely torch. You're going to lose it here. He's going to torch this linebacker. Now, at this point in time as a quarterback, what we have is a mesh route coming underneath here. We got a mesh route. got a hitch right here. I love this mesh concept corner route over here, right? Classic mesh play, classic running back wheel mesh. It's an ISO Mesh play with your running back on the linebacker. Super easy to read out. Right now as a quarterback, you know this guy is not going to stay with him up the sideline. You know it. There's no safety in the way. You have no help over here. This is a layup. Take this layup and stick it. All right, I believe that AR is looking here for this ball, but he's going to get pressure because Torrance right here is going to get kind of beat, right? Just for a second. Now, Torrance recovers. He recovers. But if you're AR... Slide in the pocket. Keep your eyes right here. You've got what you want. Don't come off this. You don't need to come off this. This looks great. This picture right here is a great picture. 
This is the snapshot you dream of seeing as a quarterback. Touchdown. I'm throwing touchdowns. I'm on the 45-yard line, and I'm throwing bombs, right? That's what you want. Slide up. Keep your eyes on it. Just keep your eyes on it and slide right here, right? Keep your eyes on it. Slide right here. And right about now, you're going to see, if you have the all-22, that Etienne's going to be two to three yards ahead of him out of that break. His arm's going to go up as he goes right off screen. Hand goes up. He knows he's got space. But AR's given up on it because he slid. He relocated his eyes down here. And then the thing is, he still has this, actually. This is a mesh concept. We have Henderson wide open for a first down here on second and nine. This ball placement's going to be behind him by a lot, low, behind him. We lose momentum. We get tackled. So either way, once you came off of the play you wanted, you still have this, right? You're fine. You're fine. Look, we're fine here. We're fine in this pocket. Just misses the throw. Now look, for AR's sake, his ball placement is probably one of his weakest traits. Uh, His ball placement is not consistent. He does not generally hit the target where you want to hit the target to maximize the play. Great arm. Super strong. Could put 20-yard passes, as RG3 talked about all broadcast long, right on somebody, right? He can dart them. But his ball placement on on throws like these has going to get better. Again, he's a sophomore. He's young. But his ball placement's got to get better because this is a play coming out of mesh where we have a big play if the ball's here. He's not going to catch him. We're turning the corner. That's going to be 20 yards, right? So little things matter as a quarterback. Ball placement, primary importance to make sure you're locating the ball in a place where your receiver can maximize your yards after catch. Doesn't happen here, but another chance for a big play that's going to be touched on on film. So we've already seen a couple of those early on. It's just the early second quarter, and I've seen a couple plays that could have been touchdowns that Florida was unable to connect on. But you like seeing that on film. Positive steps here early on in this game as far as, as, far as film study goes. Third and six, we're going to motion Frazier's across the formation here. They don't man him up, so we know we have zone. Good pre-snap confirmation. AR goes back to the line. Know you got zone. Take a look at what you want. Third and six, let's make something happen here. He's going to lock on right here to what he thinks is this window hitch route. Now, you can't see it, but the defender is right on top of him. He's then going to just stare at it. Little pump, right? Little pump. Okay, it's not there. He's doing this because it's not there. Do not throw this ball. That ball is not there. You're going to have to go somewhere else on third and six. They've only rushed three. You've got tons of time back here. Don't do it. Don't you do it. He does it, and he's lucky this is not a pick. This should be a pick. This is his worst pass of the day by far. One of his worst passes in the entire season, given pre-snap, post-snap, read and decision-making. And again, you know this. As a quarterback, if you do this, if this is what happens, and you're not pump faking to move someone open, you know right now, just don't throw the football. Just don't do it. Your brain is basically telling you, don't do it. Bad idea, bad idea, bad idea. Terrible idea. Pick. Ooh. Dodge a bullet. So again, I think AR is still showing he's uncomfortable in the pocket. When you have this kind of time back here, just bounce. Keep your feet underneath you. Bounce around, bounce around, scan, scan, bounce around. Buy time. You're super athletic. The more these routes move around, the easier it will be for you to escape when you choose to right? Don't force a throw that's not there on third and six and you're this athletic. Wait, be patient, let the plays come to you. All right, fourth and six for Florida. If you're watching on television, you have no idea that Florida has Frazier's down here off your screen outside the hash mark. You can't even see that, but he is there. A&M's going to play cover one man. So they're identifying who's on who. Cover one man, exactly what you want if you're the quarterback here. Again, easy read, you're manned up here, manned up here, manned up here. This route's just here to pull him under, so we can basically hit the primary route here, which is going to be the dig, or the secondary route, which is going to be this drag across. The dig is going to be wide open, and AR should know this, and I'm going to tell you why in a second. As a quarterback right here, and you're going to see it on your screen, he has now turned his hips. He's opening his hips facing the sideline here, He is literally telling you, he's telegraphing and signaling to you, I will give you the dig. You can have it. There's no possible chance I can cover it. I cannot flip my hips open to get this. It's a guarantee. I am bailing and trying to keep this route to the sideline. I have no help inside here. Please run a dig on me. All right, again, if you're AR, that's really simple. Right here, you don't like this. That's not there. Great. Well, now we're going to come here because that's the only other route you have on the right side of the field where you're reading that is even remotely sensible. You got to go there. Barber's going to do a nice job here to relocate an inside rush. At this point in time, AR should come here and keep his eyes down the field where it looks like they are right now. And at this exact point in time, if he doesn't take his eyes off the field, which is what happens here, a little bit of a stumble perhaps, but he loses a little balance. Maybe his eyes are no longer on the field. 
And this really easy dig route for a 15-yard completion, which is what should be thrown, is not thrown. So now we're in scramble mode. Good thing we're really athletic. He's going to pull off of this. They're going to got to come stop AR, right? And AR is going to do something that happens, you know, in, in flag football all the time, which is don't cross the line of scrimmage. Let's go ahead and make a little pitch here. Forward, right? A forward pitch, but we're still cool. We're good. I'm behind the line. Doesn't matter. I can do whatever I want. Forward pitch is good. Boom. Right here to Montrell. Montrell, which is, does a really nice job of being ready, right? Again, he's the check down. He's like, okay, I'm ready. This might come to me. I'm looking at you. I'm here. I'm vibing. Bam. Down the sideline we go. AR celebrating. We got this on fourth down and six. I'm feeling good on my improv skills. Little chip block there. Down we go. Big gain down the sideline. So really nice improv play. I'm not going to take anything away from that. I love it. That's great. AR loves it. I love it. Again, on film, optima- you're trying to be optimal. Say an AR, keep your eyes downfield because that's what you want to hit. You want to hit the dig route. That's a higher percentage play than having to make that play. But as a coach, hey, I love this play. Let's go. We're flexing. We're freaking stoked over here. Everyone's stoked, right? Big play, athletic play. I love it. But I would love it even more if we hit the higher percentage play in the future. But I'm going to celebrate this one because it's nice. It's good stuff. Nice play. We talked last week about Florida's absent quick game. And here's a nice example. And they have not had many chances this season to have a layup look like this. This is three on two. This is an auto. You must make this play. It's three on two. There's a lot of ways to do this. But one is to not run a play fake, which we don't do. Thank you. No need to play fake this. We're three on two. Get the ball out here as soon as you possibly can. That's step one. Step two, we're going to open up here a little pop route. I like this. We're not going to come backwards. We're going to stop and shuffle. That's okay. Shuffling is okay because now we've reset our momentum here by Douglas. Check a, take a look. We're resetting our momentum forward into this window. That's perfect technique on the pop route. Love this. And now we are blocking correctly. Going to lock down here. Going to come around here and lock down there. We're three on two. Let's use that to our advantage. Give him a choice. Do you want to go here or do you want to go here? This is a well-designed play. He's going to take the outside. After he sees this on film, he's going to know next time this happens to hit this right here for a touchdown. He's going to know. He's learning. He's young, right? He'll know. Hey, listen, it's not high school anymore. When you get a block like that, ride out. Don't waste any time. Stick this thing at 100 miles an hour or take the sideline, but do one of them at 100 miles an hour, right? Bam, make your decision and go. You got blockers. Instead, kind of slows up, tries to give a hezzy, and then gets wrapped up. Regardless, on second and two, it's a nice conversion. Could have been much bigger. You like plays that could be touchdowns. That was one of them. Nice work with the quick game. It's going to keep defenses more honest if you're going to throw those zero drop quick games. Florida needs to do more of that. They do it here. I told you earlier I wanted to give Henderson the benefit of the doubt for just blocking the wrong guy. Perhaps the play was, in fact, supposed to be doing that. Well, here we are again, three on three. First and goal, we're three on three, right? Probably four on three. Okay, what are you, to the short side, what, what are we doing here? What is happening? Look, we're going to run forward again. Here comes Montrell. We're going to go backwards. He does leverage himself nicely. So we're going to give him a check mark, check mark there. Leverages nicely downhill. But what what is going on here? Again, there's there's three guys here. There's three guys here, not two. So are we trying to bring Xanders around to block him here like we saw before? Um, no, no, we're not. We're going to just double block him and then trust that Montrell is going to beat both of these guys and then this guy and then probably this guy because that makes some sense, right? Yeah, that's great. I don't understand that play call. That play call needs to go in the delete bin, in the recycle bin, in the garbage can, whatever you want. That is fundamentally a broken play, theoretically and realistically. Put on film right here. This does not make sense. This should go away. Second and goal, Florida's going to run a mesh concept here that's going to be a touchdown. Unfortunately, AR is not going to stick in the pocket long enough, but this is going to be your touchdown right here, coming off your screen. It's going to take a second to develop. Open up, nice pocket. Again, a three-man rush, just a three-man rush here. Florida's offensive line is a good pass blocking line, especially against opponents that are overmatched. Plenty of time. AR feels he's got plenty of time. He's looking around now. He is staring right now, right at the mesh point which is exactly what you should be doing. And you should know at this point in time, you guys can't see it, but at the smash point, for sure, he knows that this one is going to come open. Absolutely going to come open based upon the body language and movements of the defenders. He knows it. Unfortunately, he inexplicably decides to roll out to the right of a super clean pocket. Double team here, locked up here. What should happen is stay right there. Stay right there. No one's coming to get you. Don't fear that. 
Take one little shuffle step right here. Keep your eyes on the mesh point you saw. Throw a touchdown right here. Bam, we're in for six. We're celebrating. Cue the band. Instead, we're going to roll out to the right. We're going to almost make a really great throw rolling out to the right. And in fact, again, he has this throw. Ball placement too far to the inside. Puts it here. It's going to be a touchdown. Ball's just a touch too far to the inside. Good play by AM's defender. Can't hang on here. Burke can't hang on here. And now we have third and goal. After another false start, Florida makes the third and goal a very long play. Almost 20 yards here. And Florida is going to get a light box. So we got five in the box. AM is ready to play pass coverage here. Again, five in the box. Take a look. Five in the box. Unblocked man here. So really four in the box. I like this call from Florida on third and goal. It's tempting to always want to drop back and pass here. But this is a nice play call given what they get. And obviously, you're going to see a phenomenal move. Again, you cannot, you just can't speak enough about how good this is by ETN, right? He's just waiting. He knows he's got this here, and he knows he's going to fill this here. But ETN sells this line right here so well, he's going to move him out of the proper gap. Bam, out of the gap, explode through, and take a look at this. He cannot get him. I mean, that's just fantastic stuff by ETN. That play's going nowhere, essentially. Turns it into something and now sets up an easy field goal for Florida. Obviously, if you get a little closer, you probably consider going for this at this stage of the game. Uh, I don't hate that. Again, running on third and long there feels almost like you're waving the red flag or the white flag, rather. But in this situation, you had good numbers. You had a chance for a big play here, which Florida's, of course, hoping for. ETN makes man miss, and Florida winds up settling for a field goal. Look, sometimes if it's third and 20, that's a big ask. It's a big calling. You want to make sure you get points on the road in this situation. I think that's just fine. Even as aggressive as I like to tend to be, I think that's just fine here. And Florida's going to take those points and go up 20 to 17. Florida's defense gets a stop. It's still 2017. Now Florida trying to extend the lead. 11 personnel still. They're going to run a two-man route combo here, but this one's going to be open. Again, I do think for sure Florida running this out of 11 personnel with three receiver sets created a lot more openings for these two receiver sets, but AR is just not comfortable with them. And really, this should not be hard as a quarterback. Your processing speed here should be much quicker than this. This is about as easy as it can get right? Fake the handoff, step back, and you're just reading your safeties. Everybody dropped, 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 dropped off this side. This is an absolute layup. They sucked up on play action. You're running play action so you can hit your intermediate drag route here to Frazier's, right? He is wide open. He's completely wide open. This is a super easy pass. AR is going to stay on the deep route here to Ricky for way too long. I mean, literally forever. And by the time he goes and he checks Frazier's, that safety's come down to take care of him. But he was not there before. Uh, that wasn't there, right? So now he's like, all right, I got nothing. I got nothing. I got happy feet. Now the last time he checks this check down, right now, he's actually bailing back to help out on Frazier's drag route, which has gone all the way to the sideline. Just hit the check down here. Instead, we choose to sling this ball away. I mean, look at this. He's bailed all the way out, right? We do not hit this check down. We throw the ball into the stands, basically hitting the Gatorade sign, that could have been five or six yards. So again, I think these are the plays that really show that AR is just not comfortable with these concepts. And that one is as easy as it gets for a quarterback there. So you can't blame Billy on that one. You got a wide open receiver on a drag. It is a simple high-low read. Should be fast and efficient. For as well as AR played in this game, he is still displaying all the signs of a, of a young quarterback. And that's fine. He's a young guy. It doesn't mean he can't ever get these concepts, right? I'm hearing a lot of that stuff on social media, like he's never going to get it. He's not going to learn. Uh, he has plenty of time to learn. Again, he's only really played 10 or 12 games in the past three years of his football life. Uh, he's got plenty of time to learn these things, right? And so he needs to do better. Here's an example on film where he should. Uh, Florida misses an opportunity. Florida finding themselves again in third and long, not an ideal situation in their own territory, but we're going to motion over Henderson. And this looks pretty promising pre-snap. This looks like cover one man. Looks like cover one man. Third and 11. This is kind of a dream for you if you're Florida. Your offensive line's been holding up pretty well. You're not getting pressured like you were against Georgia. You might have time to get something big here. Let's see what we get. A&M is going to bring pressure. Kind of slow pressure, right? I mean, just four. Spy, four, right? So we're manned up. Manned up here. Just bring four. No pressure. AR, I think, reads this out as pressure, but it's not pressure. Spy. Ricky is going to destroy his man in the slot. 
single high safety you can't see. And right here, if you're AR, back foot on the ground, he's looking at this read window. It's third and 11. He's gone. Ricky's gone. If you're even, you're leaving. He's gone. Look at this pocket. Great job by the O-line. The spy is going to be wasted. Let this sucker fly. Let's score six points here. Let's get another bomb of a touchdown right here. We have this. Sling it. Sling it. Come on, sling it. You got a clean pocket. Step up and sling it. I really hate it when I do that, by the way. Here we go. We're back. Step up and sling this thing. Here we go. Sling it. Sling it. Sling it. Sling it. Sling it. Nope, I'm not going to sling it. And now I'm going to escape to the right, even though I should come to the left. Because obviously this guy's waiting for me. Uh, that's not going to work. And I'm going to throw this ball mm, kind of away. So Florida misses an absolute bona fide touchdown here with a good ball. Again, Ricky is gone. He's gone. He winds up separating by a good three yards on this play. But AR gives up early. You got to let this happen. You have to. You have to let it happen. You're clean here. Trust your guys. Trust your big guys here up front. Trust them. Stay a quarterback. Keep your eyes downfield. Extend the play. Don't escape if you don't have to. Make a big play here. And unfortunately, it doesn't happen. Florida has to punt up 2017. After a false start, there's a minute left, and Florida has three timeouts. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because we've talked about it on the podcast. I've talked about it on film reviews. For most of you, you're going to agree with this. For some of you, you're not. Well, I don't like Florida's mentality in these situations. We have a busted play right here. Busted play totally. Everyone gets this wrong. AR just has to run. He gets back to the line of scrimmage. No big deal. It's second down and 15, right? Now, a has scored on you quite a bit. You're worried if you throw in complete passes, they could score on you again, and they get the ball. I understand that. It's kind of like a, again, it's a mayday situation, as Napier would call it. It's not ideal because they could get the ball, score, score again, whatever. Well, you can't always play in fear. You've also moved the ball really well in this football game, right? Really, really well. You've been converting. You've had open plays. You've had big chances. So to basically just shut this junk down with a minute left and three timeouts doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I'm not a fan of that. Scared money don't make money. There's been a lot of scared money at the end of the first half of these football games. And I would like to think it's not going to happen in the future when Napier trusts Florida's offense to be more consistent. But right now, it's definitely been a frustration point. I just don't like the message that's sending to my players. I don't trust you. we got a minute left. I don't think I do the right thing. I'm going to shut that junk down and move on to halftime. This is valuable time in a football game. Valuable time. If you trust your players and you trust your offense, you have 51 seconds and three timeouts. You've done really well to score more points. Why are we wasting that time? I don't know. I don't have a good answer for it. I don't like it. It's an opinionated thing. It's a preference thing. It's not 100% guarantee, you know, shut it down or don't shut it down. But for me, I'd prefer that we didn't do that in these situations like this, given all the things that were going on in this football game. So Florida, I think, misses a chance to add more to their tally. And Florida will go into the half down 24 to 20. All right, first and 10, Florida's defense gets a stop out of the second half, showing they mean some business here. Got to take advantage of that as an offense, short field situation. Here we go. Love this route combo. Again, Florida 11 personnel. I just like this a lot more, but I love this combo. We've talked about this early on in the podcast as well. One of my favorite concepts against zone is to run what I like to call kind of wake routes. Imagine you're in the wake behind a boat. It's not an official name. It's what I like to call because it, it makes sense for players to understand it. But you're going to be in the wake. I want Ricky to be in the wake right here of the lead receiver. Get right in his wake. Make this conflict really difficult for these receivers. I mean, these are corners that are trying to pass off these routes. Make that decision not clear for as long as possible. And you're going to see this happen. He's in his wake. It's beautiful, right? He goes in this wake long enough that the slot defender thinks, I've got to pick up this vertical route. And the dropping cover three defender thinks, I've got to pick up this vertical route. And they all tend to think Ricky's going to take this to a post or keep going. So no big deal. But Ricky's actually going to break this to an out route. That's what AR is looking for. The timing on this play is perfect. AR is going to set and be ready to throw right here. Good spacing, good window, easy ball, wide open receiver. Something you want to see, we need to see on film. Make a man kind of miss, go down easy. Big first down. You can see the frustration here by the defender. This is always what you want to see, right? Right here, bam, clap it up a little bit. You know that you just got beat mentally. You know you made the wrong decision. You didn't do your job. And that is because of a good play design and great execution. Love to see that. Nice stuff by Florida. First and 10, Florida did not have Justin Shorter in this game. He's been Florida's most productive receiver, the most targeted guy. 
No problem. Florida's going to fake a split zone here. Man-to-man -man look again from a and Bottom of your screen, which you can't see right now, is Frazier's. This, in my opinion, is the best throw of AR's career. Not the best read. Not a complicated play. We're just going to throw a fade route. We're going to throw a fade route with tons of time. No duress. But this is an NFL-level fade route, and this is perfect touch on this football. Right For a guy who's got an absolute missile for an arm, the reason AR's ceiling is so high is he can do this stuff. He's not consistent enough yet. He's nowhere near a level of like, hey, I can trust this guy to complete 70% of the passes. He's not an NFL quarterback yet as far as his consistency, mechanics, et cetera, uh, ma you know, mastery of the game. He's not there yet, but he shouldn't be. He's a sophomore, but he can do things like this. This is an absolute NFL throw, high, soft, outside of your receiver where only you can get it away from the safety who's shading to your side. I mean, this could not be better. This is perfect coverage and a better throw. Throw him open to the sideline. Phenomenal catch there by Frazier's. Great finish. That's just good stuff, right? That's good stuff. Again, if I'm doing an AM defensive breakdown, everything was right here. This is just a better play. He's thinking, please. Right now, this is the thought of like, hmm, this that looked like a touchdown. But I'm gonna say please be incomplete. Oh nope. That's uh that's not incomplete. He's going to think, yeah, yeah, you're right about that. That was a pretty nice catch. I really have no argument. That's a really nice play. Great catch, right? AR said after the game was a better catch here by Frazier's. But in reality, that's a great throw. That's an absolute dime. No real window there. No real space there. Perfect height. Perfect velo. Great location. Great ball placement. Awesome, awesome throw. Florida's defense gets another stop. Look out. Two in a row. For those counting at home, pretty good stuff. But Florida's in their own trouble here, third and long. And a guy that you almost never see do this, again, did not have a great game here, is Torrance, Florida's best offensive lineman. He is just going to get abused right there, gone. I mean, right, he is, woof. He's diving into the pool. He's ready to roll. He's diving in. He's launching himself. Not the look you want to have. You're not recovering from that. AR takes pressure right up the gut. All he can really do is try to make something magical happen. And of course, as AR will, he does. And then Torrance comes back to finish him off. He's like, hey, man, you should be sacked. That's my fault. I'm going to make sure that you're going to be sacked. Hold on. I'm coming to you. Check me out. I'm coming. I'm coming right here. I got you. Bam. Get down. There it is. Finish him off. Make sure he goes down. That's unfortunate. <laughs> AR is like, come on, bro. He's like, you let him in. And then... I still had something going, and then you you sacked me. You know, but that happens. Again, it's hard to play O-line. Not every O-lineman's perfect. Torrance, not his best day. Not his best day there for sure, and Florida has to punt in a very tight football game with plenty of time left. I haven't showed you too many run plays, not because there weren't good ones, but because this is stuff you've seen a lot now on film from Florida. I try to show you more of the things we haven't seen as much or the progression of AR. But you got to put some of these in here. Another great design by Billy. Jet sweep. We've seen a million times. We're going to make sure we block the unblocked defender. Just kind of get in his way. And now we're going to run wide zone out here and trust that Montrell, if we lock this up, which the O-line does, gets to go one-on-one -on -one here with a nickel or a safety. In this case, Montrell is going to put the foot in the ground, little head fake. Nope, gone. Right? He's gone. He's not, he's not anywhere there. He's way out of it. We're going to split these guys, get out the outside here, take an extra five, six, seven, nine, ten, yards down the field and take a nice easy run on first down for a big play obviously Florida for a long time and it's one thing we should appreciate was incapable of generating chunk plays in the running game well Florida does that now almost every single game and they especially do it against opponents that are overmatched and they did it again in this game whenever you run the jet sweep reverse you either feel like an absolute fool because you lose 10 yards or you feel like a hero because it hits big there are other options, but that generally seems to be the case. Here we go. Jet sweep. Again, it's nice when Florida does this because they run this jet sweep a million times a game, right? So it's not surprising that jet sweep gets the ball. In fact, it's kind of normal. Except here, here comes Ricky. Again, creative ways to get a playmaker of the football. There it is. Great toss by Frazier's. Really nice work there. Great toss. That's a nice piece of execution right in the breadbasket. And now here's Torrance. We're looking for a block. Here we're coming out here. Here comes AR. Let's get Ricky some max yards. AR doesn't really want to block, right? I mean, he's kind of like, I will block. I'll block him. I'm cool. Yeah, you know, you got that, Ricky. Take off. Nice work. Good first down. Keep going. Maximize the yards. Nice play on second down and 10 for a big first down. Kirby Smart says that college football is 75% is players, 25% coaching. 
that may be right on the money or off, or there could be some other allocation, but he's certainly not wrong that at some point you have to have players that do special things. And obviously seven here is the guy who does that. And RG3 was all about him, especially after this one, talking about what scouts are going to see on film. And again, there's no doubt the stuff that ETN's putting on film is absolutely excellent. His feet are incredible. They're always underneath him. He's super slippery. He's explosive with every move. And you're going to see it again here, right? First of all, let's dodge one. Okay, I'm dead. No, I'm good. I'm good. But sell this little inside move here. Get out of here. Again, quick spring. Look how much faster he shoots into this hole versus the linebacker, right? Very, very quick. And then right here again, he's dead. I mean, come on. He's absolutely dead. There's no chance he's going anywhere. This guy makes a real poor decision to basically just dead fish at him. Here I come. I'm a fish jumping in the air, and I don't have wings. Dead fish to the ground. Bam. Okay, no worries. My feet will stay underneath me. I'm good. And then I'm right back on my feet, right? He's off balance. I'm right back on my feet. After the fish came across the bow of my boat, I dodged him. Now I'm good. I'll make another head fake here. Boom. Another head fake here. This guy's going to start digging in the ground for gold, right? Let we go. Bam. Panhandling. He's like, man that is cold he's like i'm gonna sit here for a while i'm at the beach i'm digging in the sand i'm trolling for lost coins like i don't even want to look back i don't even want to know yep that's right first down i mean yep that i'm looking up to the sky i mean that's pain but that's just filthy filthy from seven right there i mean that's such good stuff he's doing it almost every single game high level stuff on film third and nine now you're gonna have an excellent example of ar Climbing the pocket and keeping his eyes downfield. One of his better plays of the day right here. Douglas is proving to be a nice route runner. He's going to find ways to get open inside release. He's going to run a corner route, though, a very deceptive route in this situation. AM has brought their rat player in cover one down, trying to stop these intermediate passing routes that Florida likes to hit. And this corner route is going to be wide open. He's going to be wide open. In fact, Douglas gets him good right here. He's going to go off your screen. He's already holding. He's really going to hold. When he goes over here, AR basically is going to make this throw, except unfortunately we got trouble because they brought pressure off the right. They brought pressure off the left, right? It looks like on the snap here, we got a three man rush, but we got a five man rush. And Florida's not going to pass this off quick enough on either side, especially here with Barber. He's just not going to get there. But AR says no problem, back foot in the ground. That's why it's important quarterbacks get your drop right, right? If your drop is sloppy here, you can't explode off your back foot. And you're going to get sacked. Instead, he can drive through this, have a drive step. Eyes are downfield, drive step, eyes downfield. At this point in time, although we can't see it on TV, he already knows that he's, his back is turned. When AR throws this ball, the DB's back is turned, and he's just grabbing. He's totally holding Douglas here. And AR just is trying to get the ball anywhere in this window. There's so much space here, right? Smash concept with a hitch and a corner. Easy money here. Gets the ball out to him. And then Payday finishes that which is great stuff. Big touchdown for Florida, separating themselves in this football game, uh, taking a 34-24 lead. Florida in 11 personnel, basically the same play we saw before when AR did not hit coming across the middle here was Frazier's. This time it's going to be Ricky. Again, these two route combos worked a lot better in this game in large part because Florida, I think, was in three receiver sets instead of two receiver sets, just less predictable. Either way, we've got play action here. We're going to pull all the linebackers in, and here is Ricky. Cover three defense again by a and They're literally giving you this pass. It's only the referee that can stop it. I mean, it's just such a layup. AR is going to read the top end here, just like we did last time. You're going to see a dropping safety you can't see, dropping corner you can see him dropping. This is an autopilot layup. The second he sees that, plant the foot, plant the foot, dart the ball. Layup, layup, layup. First and 10 becomes another first down. I mean, look at Ricky. He's completely wide open, but AR once again just stays on this too long. I think this is a product of having such a strong arm. If you're a quarterback that does not have an arm that you can throw at a standstill 70 yards, you basically have a short window where you can let this ball go and even get it, even get it deep enough. And so you kind of know that window's gone. I can't get that. I'm going to come here. But AR's arm is so strong. He's like, I'm just going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. But he's missing these easy throws. These are, these are throws you've got to have. You've got to soften these throws up. This play's never going to be open if you don't start hitting this one, right? And teams know that on film. So here's Ricky. We're going to miss this play again. Wide open, total miss. Just sticks on that route. He's still he's still on that route. And then he comes to Ricky right at the end. But Ricky's going to always get picked up. He's going to run himself out of a window. And so now we take this check down. Finally. 
that's improvement. We're going to take that check down and we're going to pick up, you know, a good eight yards. So we're going to take that. It's first down and 10. We'll take eight yards all day long. That's great. But we could have had 15 yards, right? So again, if you're AR, you're looking at film. Hey, I've got to do a better job. If I read bail, 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 I have to check intermediate. That should be immediate. Come off these deep routes right away. Get back, open your eyes, take a look at what you see ahead. Nothing is here. Come to the middle route. Nothing is there. Take your check down. It's got to happen faster. It's not a complicated read set. But in this case, Florida does pick up eight yards. This play makes my heart warm because it's an RPO. And Florida, in my opinion, should be running way more of these, especially with a quarterback like AR. It's just so dangerous. There's so many options. Split zone. Again, Florida's best running play. Play action right here with an inside zone run, which and on its own actually would have been a good play. He's going to keep this and take this slant route right here. Bam, stick it in there. Actually pretty good coverage on this play. Not good ball placement. Again, look at the ball placement behind him, right? This ball's got to be more out front. It's behind him. We're going to catch this ball anyway and get a first down on second and five. So RPO, check. Very nice. Move the sticks. It's second and 20. This is smart play calling and smart play design here. You know that a team like AM has been struggling to cover you all day. It's probably going to give you a kind of kind of give you 10 or 12 here, especially with a cover three look. Let's watch what happens pre-snap. Pre-snap, they're going to tell you right away. Right? They're telling you right away. Look, we're opening, we're bailing. If you want to take this hitch route, we're going to give it to you. And Ricky's going to run a great hitch route here. Bingo. Clean pocket. Open up. Read that he's a dropper. Yep, he dropped. Sling a missile in there. He's coming back downhill now. This ball's on him so fast. He's able to make a move one way or the other. There it goes. Not a tackle being made. And we're going to wind up getting a first down on second and 20. First down on second and 20. Don't worry about that fumble. Largely because of how strong AR's arm is. And again, another example on film of why people are going to really like AR's ceiling talent. Whether or not he gets there is going to be up to him. But he can do all the things you need to do. He just is not able to do them consistently yet. And of course, cleaning up the reads and all that stuff can come with time. It also cannot. Some quarterbacks just get stuck. But in general, nice conversion here for Florida on a second and 20. It's about this point in the game where Florida begins to run a lot of 12 personnel. They had done it, they had done it almost zero times up until this point, And now you're going to start seeing it a lot. Here's Odom. Here is Xander's in together. So we're going to play 12. Again, I think this is Florida's weakest offense all year long. But right here, we are going to run the best play out of it, which of course is split zone once again, creating a nice hole here in the inside zone run. Look at this alleyway, running them out, right? Ripping them over here. I mean, this is just great stuff. We've seen this in almost every game Florida's played versus the teams that are not named Georgia for the most part. And he is off to the races. And this is going to be a touchdown. Montrell is going to set him up here. I'm looking here. Take a look. I'm looking here. Footwork. I'm looking here. And now I'm going to head fake. And bam, I got you. You're going this way. Except he snipes himself right there. Doesn't get the step he wants. He wants to explode this way. Launches himself with the wrong step. And down he goes. And obviously he's frustrated. He knows it. He knows he had a shot for a big touchdown there. But again, Florida generates these chunk rushing yards with such ease this year. It's not something we should take lightly. It's really good work by Napier and his staff to continue to open up these kind of holes in almost every game Florida plays. After several 12 personnel running plays that felt a little bit conservative, given how well Florida's moving the ball in 11 personnel, Florida goes back to 11 personnel in a crucial third and nine, 10 point game, still plenty of time left. And they're going to get everything they want in this look. They're going to sell a and on the run. a and playing cover zero, right? Cover zero, no one can help. Um, we're manned up here. Sorry, cover one. Your free defender is here, really playing no one, right? Florida's got this here. And then you got Ricky one-on-one. -on -one. This is the matchup that that you obviously want, right? He can't help. They're doubling on the inside over here. They're giving your best route running receiver the slant route, which is the best route to run in the situation. This is a really nice job by AM's defender. Really nice play, but this ball is here for AR. And this has been AR's weakness is ball placement. The timing here is great. I love the timing. If you wait even longer, he's going to be all over this route. Timing is great. Ball placement is not great. Ball placement's got to be not here, but here. The ball placement's here. Ricky's got him shielded. He's on his backside. AR can see his chest. This ball comes right here. He walks in the end zone touchdown. Instead, this ball again is behind him. Something we see AR do a lot. He does not tend to miss in front. He tends to miss behind. He tends to miss behind. He's going to need to dial that in. Uh, as this season goes on, but especially in the off season, 
whether no matter where he goes, if he decides to go to the NFL, if he stays at Florida, he's got to fix his ball placement. These are crucial throws that will need to be made if he wants to progress as a quarterback. And again, he consistently leaves them behind the receiver, something that needs to get cleaned up. Florida misses an opportunity to score a touchdown, and they also miss an opportunity to kick a field goal because they miss. Florida's going to go empty again. I like this. One thing I'd like to see more is taking your best matchup. So we just saw that seven for AM here locked up Ricky, Florida's best route running play earlier. Now he's got Frazier. a guy who on film, in my opinion, has not put good routes on film. Not a great route runner, does not create separation. A guy, of course, you can use to run zone, great hands, had a great fade rate touchdown, a uh, fade route touchdown. But if I'm a quarterback and I've got what I have here, I've got clearly cover one man. I'm not thinking this is my matchup, right? But more importantly, in general, again, we've talked about Florida running some combination routes to help themselves more versus man. Uh, we're not going to get that here. We're going to run three individual routes again, individual, individual, individual. There's no rubbing. There's no helping. It's third and six. I just don't love that. I'm going to keep saying that. But AR decides his best matchup is going to be this hitch route here, uh, which is not going to be the best matchup, right? We're driving downhill. This is a really nice play. He's all over this play. There's no window for that. AR tries to correctly throw the ball to the outside, which has to be done here. A little too far outside and incomplete. However, pre-snap, which you do have. And again, Florida's not put this on film yet, but I think they need to start doing it. You have Montrell right here with a linebacker. Now look, Florida's running backs are very athletic. This should be a plus matchup right here. Should be a plus matchup, right? He is going to absolutely kill him on a slant and go. You're going to see none of it. But he is going to be five yards open right here. It is a He could throw it with his eyes closed and put it anywhere over. That's going to be a touchdown. Unfortunately, it's not the matchup he looks at. Again, you, you're, really going, you're thinking you're getting pressure right here, right? Which he doesn't. That's problem number one. There's no pressure. This is not a hot route. You're not going hot. You're not going smoke. You don't need it. You have time. And he's throwing this like it is a hot route right into where a and wants him to throw it. Take a look at this. They know Florida likes to run that empty side. They've seen it on film. We've all seen it on film. If teams play man, it's third and six. Florida wants a slant route. They want something over here. a and knows it. a and sets up. Free defender is going to be right in this lane, right in the lane we like to throw the ball to. They call our bluff, and we do not have that pass, right? Instead, again, AR could have looked here pre-snap, or he can still read this out, hike, read, read. He's flat-footed. That's dead. I don't have an option route here. I can't take him over the top. He did my move backwards. He's going to eat that up. Snap my head around quickly. Take my second best option. Whoever you determine to be pre-snap. Look, you've got to pre-snap this stuff out. He's not going to read. He can't sprinkle read this stuff against man that quickly, right? He's got to pick his second best read. And it would be very unusual to go here and then all the way over here. So in reality, you have to pick one of those boundary players as your matchup. He chooses the wrong one, puts a ball in there. That's all there is. So again, that's why I think versus man, you want to try to think more about these route combos. It's one thing if you've got a if you've got a great receiver over here and you see this one on one, give him an option route. Let him run whatever the heck he wants to run. You know he'll get open, but that's not what's happening here. And this just seems low percentage. We've seen Florida do this too often, in my opinion. Uh, ten point lead, ten minutes left. Florida's not going to wind up converting here. All right, Florida still running in 12 personnel. I mentioned that to you earlier. A lot of these third downs were preceded by 12 personnel plays. Here's 12 personnel again by Florida. Again, you can see how important this is to Billy. Uh, Florida's just not as good at 12 personnel as they are at other stuff. It was proven out in this fourth quarter of this football game as well, in my opinion. Bunch set here. We saw Georgia go to school on Florida with the same exact set. Florida, of course, likes this set as well. And we're going to go just one-on-one -on -one up top. Now, this is a different situation. It's second down and eight. Right, second down and eight. Florida tends to throw vertical routes in this situation. We've talked about the need for a quick game. Florida's got to start hitting quick game. We just can't keep running 20 yard routes. We have to have teams honor routes in this area and we get what we ask for. We're not going to play fake because we don't need to. All we're going to do here is open this up. If he, if he backpedals even at all, I know I have this route, right? That's all the quarterback's reading. He backpedaled. Bingo. I know I have it. Get it out. Perfect timing, quick game, zero drop, get it out, put it on him, let him make a move. If it's good enough, he might turn the corner, right? Here we go. Boom, almost turns the corner. Instead, we get a first down on second down and eight. Florida's got to put more quick game on film. It was great. It was delicious, if you will, to see this on film in this game. Great stuff here. Happy to see it. Florida moves the sticks. Florida up 10. We've run a bunch more 12 personnel plays to find ourselves in fourth and goal. Again, not very successful. Can't get in the end zone. We're still running them. We're still running them here. 
I hate this play. I've said it before many times before. I know a lot of you think that's too critical. I know a lot of you think I'm too critical in general, but you know what I'm trying to do here is talk about being optimal, in my opinion. <laughs> and so on this play, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. You're going to put all of your players in a tight little box here. a and going to respond with a look that is not favorable for you, right? They're, they're telling you they're coming. They know you want to run the ball. They're going to they're gonna, they're gonna shut that junk down as best they can. Here we go, A-gap blitz, right? We're coming off the edge. We're coming off the edge. We're bottling all this stuff up. It's just so much easier to play defense this way when you know you can create an edge here and an edge, an edge here by blitzing, and now you've sealed up the edge, and you can tell these guys just hit all your gaps as hard as you want. Just smack all your gaps, man-to-man -man here. It just, I don't like it. It's power football. It's probably an ethos thing. It's like, hey, we've got to win these things, right? Let's man up. I don't like it at all. And Florida gets owned on this play. I mean, there's nowhere to go. It doesn't matter what you do, right? You can't keep this ball. You're going to get destroyed. You hand it off. You're going to get destroyed. I mean, there is no chance you're doing anything on this play but losing yards. Don't like that call. That one doesn't make any sense to me. Dislike it. Not a good one. Get rid of that one as well. Uh, but Florida gets stopped. And there's, you know, there's still time left in this football game here. Now, for those of you that are wondering whether Florida should have gone for that, I am absolutely in favor of Florida going for this. I abide pretty heavily by the rule of scores. So if Florida kicks a field goal, they're still up two scores. Now, I know that that means um, that you're going to have to wind up kicking. Obviously, uh, you're going to score two touchdowns rather and an extra point than you are if you get you know just nothing here and you're up 10. But it's still two scores. If Florida scores a touchdown, touchdown, they're up three scores and the game is effectively over, right? So I like the math here. I also like the EV of going for it on the one-yard line. You still have positive easy EV to score the next time. You are more likely to score as opposed to your opposition in this situation. Uh, but I would absolutely go for this if my offense has put up 34 points and I've done a good job. But with this play call, I would have thought differently about what I was going to do. But in general, I actually do like that call. I like going for the rule of three scores here, knock the team out, put them away. If not, your defense stopped them five, five times in a row at this point in time. Uh, trust them to get the stop. So Florida does get stopped. Defense has to come back out on the field with Florida up 10. All right, third and goal and 12 personnel. If it doesn't work 20 times, try it 21 times, right? Keep on trying it because that's what we're going to do. So Florida with a small wrinkle here, they are going to run a counter, right? So they're going to make it look like we're going to run outside zone over here. Everything is set up for this. Everything looks that way. But in reality, this entire play right here always has the option for a cutback. Montrell does this better than any of Florida's running backs. He sees these cutback lanes that are built in very well. And this play is really created by Tarquin, all right? It looks ugly here. At his first step, it looks ugly, but he's doing exactly what he should do. He needs to get head inside right here, head inside. Here's your unblocked man. Head inside so that I can then turn and push him out of the hole, right? He gets help right here because a &M is overzealous right here on Torrance. He's overzealous flying through. Torrance knows that's okay. I want that guy to push himself up the field because this cutback lane bingo should be there. Momentum going this way versus momentum going that way should win for the running back, and it does. He gets a hand on him. Can't stop him before he gets in the end zone. And Florida finally finds pay dirt in a fourth quarter where this game easily could have been 50 to 24. I think that was largely due to Florida's insistence on playing 12 personnel, something, again, in my opinion, they really struggled with in this game, whereas they were so successful in 11. Another stop by the defense, and we see Lingard on the field, although he's on the field now more for just more than just for victory formation. But he's here, he's on the field. Snap it. Let's get out of here. Let's go home. Florida had last played at AM. They lost in the game I was at with Kyle Trask. Very frustrating in 2020. Florida gets a win here. Look, I know that AM was decimated with injuries and suspensions and a bunch of other stuff, but it doesn't matter on film. A lot of what we saw was some of the best stuff that Florida has done as a team, more importantly. They played some of the best football over a sustained stretch of the season. They did that after having a really rough eight days. Two players are removed from the team. One quits for the transfer window and Wilcoxon. Cox is kicked off the team. Then you get, you know, you get the Cormani news with Miami recruiting him. There's a lot of stuff going down, but Florida goes on the road, gets a big win, a convincing win, a good team win. We'll see if that translates into momentum for the rest of the season. We're going to find out. Of course, I'll be with you. I'll be here with you each and every week where I'm going to break down what happens next with Florida's game against South Carolina.
Until then, I'm James from the Gator Nation Flow Podcast. I hope you enjoyed this film review, and I'll see you next week.